Hi there, in this video I'm going to be talking about R squared. We're going to be talking about what it means and what its potential use is in econometrics. And I think this is probably best illustrated by means of an example. So let's say I have some independent variable x and some dependent variable y which I'm trying to explain. And I have some data which perhaps looks something like this, let's say. Well, when you say when, when I say we're trying to explain y, really what we're trying to do is we're trying to explain deviations from the average value of y. We're trying to explain why our dependent variable actually ever goes above or below the average value of y. And what we actually do in order to do this is, or one method we can use to do this, is to use linear regression. So we fit a sort of straight line to the data, and this line here explains some of the variation in y in terms of the variance in x. So you can sort of see here, if I mark along all the points which um, our line predicts for y in terms of x, then we've explained some of the variation in uh, for each of the points um, away from the sample mean. So, for example, in this first point here, the total distance is sort of this yellow line here, whereas the sort of distance which is explained by our model is this sort of purple line there. And we said that a sort of measure as to how well our model is explaining the data is something which we call the explained sum of squares, which is the sum from i equals 1 to n of our fitted values of y minus the average values of y, all squared. And we square the values so that we treat both deviations below and above the mean equally. Well, you might ask, why don't we just use this measure to describe how well our model is fitting the data. Well, the problems with this measure is that it actually depends on units. So if y here is measured in meters, let's say, we might get a value which is 0.1 meters squared. And, or if it was measured in temperature, for example, we might get something that's like 10 Kelvin squared. And I hope you can see from both of these two different values, it's very hard to see whether 0.1 meters squared or 10 Kelvin squared is actually a good thing or not. Um, because this measure, the explained sum of squares, actually has a unit. So what we do actually, our, our way around this, is we define something which we call the R squared of a regression, which is the ratio of the explained sum of squares divided by the total sum of squares. So and this value, because it's a ratio, has a sort of range, uh, ordinarily, between 0 at the lower bound and 1 at the upper bound. So 1 here means that I have explained 100% of my variance in y by my model, and 0 means that I've explained nothing of my sort of movement in my dependent variable for my model. So what might these two different scenarios look like in terms of a fitted model? So if I have some x and some y that I'm trying to explain, and I have some data points, well, the zero sort of lower bound might be, well, is illustrated by a line which is drawn just at the sample mean in y. So if um, my sort of model is actually just, okay, let's, whatever the value of x, let's just predict that y is going to be at the sample mean, then I hope you can see from this above expression that that will actually be zero in this case and r squared will be zero because of that. Okay, so that's a sort of lower bound. But what's the upper bound mean? Well, it means that if I fit a model to my data that goes through each of my points, so it explains all the variation in y, then basically that means that I've explained 100% of the variation in y, hence my sort of r squared value is one. So on the face of it, it seems that R squared might be a good measure of how well my regression model fits the data. But in actuality, there are some very, very serious problems with R squared, and we will discuss them in future videos, but these seriously hinder the ability to um, describe our model particularly well in terms of the R squared statistics.